or 
or something on you or towards you, amen? But greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So we got to understand that I don't care if this whole room was pitch black and I struck a match. Where are your eyes going to go to? My God. To the light. To the light. We are the light. So the Bible tells us that we are the light. And we need to take that seriously and walk in that light. Amen. The Bible tells us that we are the salt of the earth. Amen. Wow. So we as the salt of the earth, we need to take our positions rightfully and understand that without us, they don't have no flavor. Wow. Right they need us to be the salt. They need us to be the light. No matter even if they're trying to come against it, they still for it, amen. They looking for it. They looking for it. Hallelujah. So we learned last time, my minister, that prayer is giving earth permission to intervene in earth's affairs. Prayer is giving earth, heaven, I'm sorry, prayer is giving heaven permission to intervene in earth's affairs. I'm going to say it one more time and y'all going to say it, okay? Prayer is giving heaven permission to intervene in earth's affairs. All right, what is prayer? Prayer is giving heaven permission to intervene in earth's affairs. So when I was reading this, and y'all gonna go with me, okay? In my sanctified imagination. So when we went back to Genesis 1 and 26, Genesis 1 and 26, let's read that. Because I need y'all to follow me on this one. So in Genesis 1 and 26, what does it say? Then God said, let us make man. Let us. So when he said us, he's talking to God the Father, right. Jesus his Son, and the Holy Spirit. Right. So he had a conversation amongst the three of them. Amen. Right. So he said, let us make men in our image according to our likeness. Then he goes on to say, let who? Yeah. Let them. So them is so he didn't say let us. He said let yeah. them. Meaning who? Us. Meaning man, right? right? Let us, let them have dominion over. So God has given who? Us. Dominion over everything wow. in the earth. Okay? So in knowing that God is a spirit. God is a spirit. So follow me now with my sanctified imagination. So if God is a spirit, the only way that he can come into earth, I mean onto the earth is through a body. Okay? So yeah. if we are a spirit. We live in a body and we have a so the only way he can come into earth is through a body. That's why Mary had the immaculate conception so Jesus can be illegal, say legal, in the earth. Because if he wasn't legal in the earth, he couldn't do nothing. Okay, so he has placed all this power and authority in our hands, and we need to understand this. God has placed all this power and authority in our hands as human beings. Because without the earth suit on, we can't function here in the earth. Without the earth suit on, you can't function here in the earth. Okay, the spirit man can only function through a body which has a soul. So if God says, let them have dominion over, if we don't give heaven permission to intervene here in the earth, heaven's hands is
didn't get an arch seat. Wow! They needed an arch suit. Don't yield your arch suit to demons, hallelujah. Don't yield your arch suit to demons, glory to God. here on the earth without an earth suit. He said, let them have dominion over. God has given us dominion over everything in the earth. Who is the prince of the air? But we have more greater authority than Satan. Amen. We have to understand that. And as we understand that, we will walk in our power and in our authority and we will take captive everything that is not like God. Amen. So, in my sanctified imagination, as I was understanding and reading the scriptures, I said, if there's a sanctified imagination, there must be a counterfeit. Wow. So, we have a sanctified imagination. That's the mind of Christ. That's the mind of excellence. And then you have a, what do they call it? Um, I just lost the thing. Imagination. It's another imagination. Come to me. Come to me. Come. It'll come to me. But it's an imagination that's tainted. So you have a sanctified imagination. Vain. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. It's a vain imagination. So the Bible speaks about vain imagination. And a vain imagination, let's say if I had an imagination and I imagined something happening that was bad. That's not a sanctified imagination. So we as the body of Christ, we have the power to push past the vain imagination and access our sanctified Oh, that's good. Hallelujah. So in knowing that, we have to understand that as we focus our power and authority, God has given us authority to have control over everything. But we got to ask him for his help. And how do we ask God for his help? Through prayer. Through prayer. It's just that simple and real deep. Through prayer. Amen. Ephesians 6 and 18. So in Ephesians 6 and 18, it talks about all prayer and all in the spirit for all occasions, all kinds of prayer and requests. And with this in mind, be altered always, keep praying for the saints of God. That is the NIV version. So the NIV version says all kinds of prayer. Then we have the New, G New King James version. The New King James version says praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to the end of perseverance and supplication for all the saints. But it's still telling us that we need to pray all the time for everybody. Hallelujah. And then we have the NLT version. The NLT version says, pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. The bottom line is, we need to do what? Pray. The bottom line is, we need to pray. Amen. We need to pray. We need to have earthly license for heavenly interference. And we need to understand that prayer is not a, a, an event. It's a lifestyle. Prayer is not an event. It's a lifestyle. The Bible says the effective, fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. When we say effective, that means success in producing a desired result. That's effective. Success in producing a re desired result. Fervent is having display or passion or intensity in your prayer. That's fervent. Now, one thing that I was thinking about when I was uh, reading this, if we pray it all the time, you don't have to pray loud. Right. And you don't have to pray long. Right. That's the truth. You don't have to pray loud. God can hear you. And you don't have to pray long. If you've been praying all the time. You don't have to pray on your knees. You don't have to pray in the closet. You don't have to pray waiting into the east. You can pray. Pray has to be authentic, amen? You can pray in your car. You can pray in the shower, amen? You can pray in the midst of doing whatever you do throughout your activities of your day. Whatever you do when you invite God in, that's a prayer, amen? So prayer don't have to be loud, and prayer don't have to be long, amen? It don't have to be loud, and it don't have to be long, okay? Think about Hannah. When Hannah 
was less than as a citizen. Right. So she was crying out to God for a son. And she was crying out to God, and she was crying, and the priest came, and he said, what's up, girl? You been out there drinking? What you in here doing? So in my sanctified imagination, I imagine her to be at the altar, just really weeping and moving her lips and saying it under her breath. Because the priest couldn't hear her while she was praying. But the prayer was fervent and it was effective. Was it effective? Because she had a son, amen. She had a son. Samuel, she gave him back to God. So when you're praying, it don't have to be loud. And it don't have to be long. All right? Then I think about Nehemiah. When Nehemiah was charged with building the wall back, he was praying. And he was asking God, what, he should do, what should he do as far as building the wall back? And y'all have to understand that Nehemiah was the cupbearer to the king. So as a cupbearer, that means if somebody brought the king a drink, Nehemiah would taste the drink first to make sure it wasn't poison before he gave it to the king. So when Nehemiah, he had heard about the wall being torn down and all the chaos and confusion that was going on over there, and that was his land. So when he came to the king, his continence had changed. Amen? Know that when something is going on, your continent changes. Yeah. So somebody said, what's going on with you? You say nothing. Your continent has changed. We know something is going on. So Nehemiah came to the king, and his continent had changed. And then he said, well, the wall has been torn down. Now when he came to the king, and the king said, well, what's up with you? What's up with your continent? He could have been killed right then and there. Because you don't come into the king's presence unless you are full of joy. Hallelujah. You don't come into the king's presence unless you are full of joy. If we come into the king of kings and the lord of lords' presence, we can muster up some joy. We can muster up something to thank him for. We can muster up something to give him some praise for. We can muster up something to say, God, you are worthy. We can muster up something to say, to get 
gave him everything that he needed. Amen? Jesus prayed all night long. Hallelujah. Paul said, pray without ceasing. Because prayer is important. Prayer is not an event. Prayer is a lifestyle. That's Say good. that with me. Prayer is important. Prayer is not an event. Prayer is a lifestyle. Say it again. Prayer is important. Prayer is not an event. Prayer is a lifestyle. And God answers prayer. When Gideon prayed unto God, he gave him direction. And Gideon was a hard um, sailor. Gideon said, God said, okay, I need you to go fight. I need you to do this. Gideon was like, uh, is that you, God, speaking to me? He was like, yeah, it's me. He said, okay, well, um, if that's you, let some Jew be outside on the grass when I get up in the morning. Listen. He got outside, there was a Jew on the grass. He said, oh, okay, God, if that's you, I'm going to put a carpet right here. And then when I come out in the morning, let Jew be on the carpet only and not on the grass. He came out there, Jew was on the carpet only and not on the grass. God is patient with us, huh? He really is. God is patient with us. When we don't get it right away, he'll give us a second chance, a third chance, a fourth chance, a fifth chance. God is patient with us. Hallelujah. Hannah prayed and God gave her a child when she was barren. Elijah prayed and it didn't rain for three years and six months. Elijah also prayed and God rained down fire from heaven. Why? Because Elijah prayed. The Bible tells us that Elijah was a man just like us. So God has no respect or person. So if Elijah can rain down fire from heaven, we can rain down fire from heaven. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We can rain down fire from heaven because we have the same power and authority. We have dominion over all the earth. Hezekiah received a word from the prophet. When Hezekiah received the word from the prophet, the prophet told Hezekiah, you better get your house in order or tomorrow you're going to die. Wow. Hezekiah put his face towards the wall wow. and he cried out unto the Lord. And when he finished praying, God added 15 more years to his life. God answers prayers. Hallelujah. Peter was in jail and he prayed. And while he was praying, he got released from jail. And he come knocking on the door. The saints of God was praying for him. And they like, who went to the door? They said, Peter. They said, we praying for Peter. He in jail. We said, we praying for Peter. He in jail. Who at the door? Peter. We praying for Peter. He in jail. No, Peter knocking on the door. Peter knocking on the door. How many of y'all got loved ones that's in jail? Y'all need to be praying for them.
brain. The doctor came in here and told her that her blood pressure was off the Richter scale. And they didn't know why she was still talking, why she was still talking. of what you need 
and or giving God all the information that's going on. Okay? God already know the information. So he don't need you to be like, um, God, sister so-and-so fell down and hit her toe. And when she got up, she hit her hip, and now she's in the hospital. That's information. God already know all of that. He already know. Y'all think when you see that brother, brother Bubblegum hit his Not knee and so-and-so, God like, what? Thing all the time. 
It's like the hardest. Y'all know y'all been there. First giving out a guy who's the head of my life. I don't even know it. I know some Deacon, you know it, don't you? Come on, say it, Deacon. What is it? You know it, you know it. <laughs> First giving out a guy who's the head of my life and gave breath and bones in my body. <laughs> And then every time you ask him to pray, it's the same thing. First giving out a guy who's the head of my life. That's not fervent. Fervent means it's heartfelt. Fervent means it's passionate. Fervent means it's applicable to what you're going through right now. Right now. So praying in the spirit, the simple definition is not in the flesh. The working definition is praying in the spirit is a fervent, faith-filled, yeah. word-based communication with God. Let's go to Romans 8 and 26. Romans 8 and 26. And then I'm going to get into the all kinds of prayer. All right. Y'all fast. Go for team. I look at something already. Okay, let's read this together. Ready? Read. Thy promise is the also our weaknesses. For we do not know but the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now, He, oh, did I say, did I say 27? Okay, 27, okay. Now, He who searches the heart knows what the mind of the Spirit is. Because He makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So that's the one thing that we really have to be mindful of. So when we're praying, we first need to ask God, what is his will? Because it doesn't matter what our will is, God is going to bring his will to pass. It's the un in Proverbs, I think it's 21, 19, it says, many are the plans in a man's heart, but the Lord's purpose will prevail. So it doesn't matter what your will is, you need to pray and seek God for his will. Because his, in his word, he said, he's going to bring his will to pass. So perseverance means persistence in doing something despite the difficulties or the delay in achieving the goal. So when I was studying our prayer, one of the things that came to my mind, one of the questions that the disciples asked Jesus was, teach us how to pray. And I found that amazing because they were right there when he performed miracles. They was right there when he opened up blinded eyes. They was right there when limbs went forward. They was right there when the woman with the issue of blood was healed. They didn't, even, they didn't ask him to do nothing else but to teach them how to pray. I think that they knew and understand still the importance of prayer. I think that they watched Jesus on several occasions and always praying, always communing with the Father. So before any miracle took place, Jesus always communed with the Father. When he had the five fish and the three loaves of bread, and he did, he, he gave it up to God and he prayed and he asked him to multiply and he started giving it out to the people. Five fish and three loaves of bread fed over 5,000 people. Why? Because he prayed and God multiplied. So having communion with the Father is very important. Amen? Yeah. So as the disciples asked God to teach them how to pray, it was in Matthew 6, 9 through 13. We're not going to go there, but I just want to give you an acronym for prayer. Pray is praise. Hallowed be thy name, our Father in heaven, for thy kingdom come, thy power and glory forever. So that's praise. So he told them to praise. That was the first part of the prayer. The R, repent. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. A, ask. Give us our daily bread. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And then why yield? Thy kingdom come, yeah. thy will be done. That's good. So he gave the disciples a blueprint for how to pray. And he gave them four points to follow when they pray. So he told them to praise God first. After you praise God, then repent of anything that you could have, should have, and would have done wrong. After you do that, then you ask God what the question 
is. Remember, we're not informing him because he already knows. Because he already knows. He already knows. So then we're asking him. Then we yield that his will be done. Yeah. So that is a blueprint for prayer. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. So I got a few minutes to get through all kinds of prayer. Y'all learning something today? Yeah. Amen, amen, amen. So let's go back to 1 Timothy 2, 1 through 7, I think it was. We don't have to go down and just read it. The Bible re reveals many types of prayer. It says first that he urges us to supplications, prayer, intercessions, and thanksgiving for all people. Here, the four main um, characteristics of prayer. So the first one is supplication. And supplication is a prayer of request. Say supplication. Supplication. Is a prayer of request. Prayer of request. So let's go to Philippians 4 and 6. Philippians 4 and 6. So this emphasizes on personal needs. A petition to God to supply a need. That's what supplication is. Right. So we have prayer of supplications. Right. We're asking God to supply a need. Amen? Amen? And Philippians 4 and 6, read that. What does it say? Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. So part of winning the spiritual battle is prayer. Remember, we talked about the ultimate weapon is prayer. So it's important for us to understand how to pray, to know that our prayer really changes things. And God has given us dominion over the earth to be able to pray, to see the manifestation of what it is that we're praying for. Amen? The next prayer is intercession. Intercession is approaching God with confidence on somebody else's behalf. So it talks about the Holy Spirit interceding for us, amen? And I'm going to find that scripture later on. But it talks about the Holy Spirit interceding for us is making utterance that cannot be communicated. And the Holy Spirit is interceding on our behalf because a lot of times we don't know what we ought to pray. The next one is the prayer of thanksgiving. A prayer of thanksgiving is an attitude of gratitude. We see that there are all types of prayer, but a prayer of thanksgiving is, um, as, is, is praising God for what he has done. A prayer of thanksgiving is praising God for what he has done. And another one is a prayer of worship. A prayer of worship is praising God for who he is. So a prayer of thanksgiving, praising God for what he has done. A prayer of worship, praising God for who he is. Then there's a prayer of agreement. Say prayer. Prayer. Of agreement. In the upper room, Jesus and his disciples were up there praying, and they were having a prayer of agreement that the Holy Spirit would fall on people. So in the book of Acts, the day of Pentecost, the prayer came to pass. The Holy Spirit fell on the people because Jesus said, when I leave, I'm not going to leave you helpless. I'm going to send a helper. I'm going to send a comforter. I'm going to send somebody that's going to help you navigate through this process. And the Holy Spirit couldn't come until Jesus died. So once Jesus died, then he sent the Holy Spirit. That's how we can be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, before Jesus died in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit came upon believers. Say, upon, upon believers. believers. So the Holy Spirit came upon them. That means the Holy Spirit came upon them to empower them to do a certain task. Now the Holy Spirit dwells on the inside of us. The Holy Spirit dwells on the inside of us. And now that the Holy Spirit dwells on the inside of us, we can do things. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is on the inside. So it's empowered us from the inside to be able to do what it is that God has called us to do. Amen? Amen. So I'm understanding that when the Holy Spirit is on the inside of us, the Bible tells us not to grieve the Holy Spirit. Wow. So we don't want to wow. grieve the Holy Spirit in our words and our actions wow. and our deeds. So everywhere you go, once you feel with the Holy Spirit, you take the Holy Spirit with you. Tell it. So you can't leave the Holy Spirit in the car while you go to the trip club. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. You can't leave the Holy Spirit in the car when you go to the bar. You can't leave the Holy Spirit in the car when you go over a married man's house. Or a woman. Or a woman. You know. You go both ways. So the Holy Spirit is with you everywhere that you go. And if you're sensitive to the Holy Spirit, he's going to give you a quickening when you're about yeah, to Yeah, he is. He's going to give you a quickening. So stay sensitive to that quickening and stay in line so you can be right with God. Amen? But if for some reason you fall off, just repent. All right? Because we being saved. We being saved. We being saved. The next one is a prayer of consecration. 
question. I want to go through this, and we're going to read this in um, response, and then I'm going to close. So let's go to Matthew 26, 36 through 46. So a prayer of consecration is when we set ourselves apart. We set ourselves aside to seek God for clarity. A lot of times we get our best prayers in when something ain't right in our life. Wow. When everything cool, we say, good morning, God. Bless you. Do this and keep on going. But when something ain't right, oh, dear Heavenly Father, we ask for your hand to intervene on our behalf and reveal this situation to us because these circumstances are, and then throughout the day, we're constantly praying to God. But you know what? I found out that sometimes that pain gets us in a place where we can cultivate that relationship yep. with God. Yep. Because that's what, all what God wants. He wants to have a relationship with you. He created you for a relationship. He created you to commune with you. That's what he wants. So it's not about religion. It's about relationship. Because religion, you can go through the motions but not have Jesus in your heart. So you want to have Jesus in your heart. You want to have a real relationship with him. You don't want to just go through the motions. That's religion. You don't want to just look sad and have on a long skirt and no makeup and a toilet on your head. <laughs> but when you get home, you're cussing everybody out. Oh, y'all know nobody like that? Just, I, I, I don't know if you like that. Y'all know nobody like that? Okay.
together in concert, 46. Wow. 46. Ready? 46, ready, me. Rise, let us be born. See my glory every day. So Jesus was right there, and he called out Peter, but he had John and James there with him, too. And he said, what? I asked y'all to just sit and pray with me for one hour. Y'all couldn't even do one hour? Y'all been trying to pray, and your eyes get heavy. Trying to read the Bible, and your eyes get heavy. It's a spirit. <laughs>
that if you have the gift of tongues, you should pray in tongues because the Spirit knows what, what to pray. Yeah. Right. And then you can also pray in your earthly understanding because there's something specific that you're asking God for. But then the Spirit is already taken care of. So just like we sing praises to God in song, we can also sing praises in our heavenly language. Yeah. So that's that right there. So in closing, prayer is a conversation with God. We should be made, and it should be made without ceasing. As we grow in our love for Christ, it is natural to want to talk to him on a regular basis. Give God some praise. Hallelujah.